Rangers dormitory. You guys saw it on the previous video or the previous podcast if you're on YouTube. What is going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Bogan Every Podcast where we talk about anything and everything from faith, finance, and fitness, the things that life throws at us. If you're on YouTube, I would ask if you could just subscribe to the channel. It would be highly appreciated. It helps out tremendously with the algorithm. If you are on Spotify, I would ask if you could follow us and give us a rating as well. If you're on Apple Podcasts, be sure to follow us and give us a rating as well. If you have Instagram, what are you doing? Follow us on Instagram at Bogan Every Podcast at Bogan Everywhere Podcast. So, guys, as you know, right now at this very moment in the recording of this video, I am in Rome, Georgia, and so you know I was here for Wind Shape. I, I, uh, it's a camp. We're gonna get into that in a second, but I'm gonna tell you guys my overall experience. I've been here for about I think three months, two and a half, three months around there. Um, I'm gonna tell you about my experience. I'm gonna tell you. About what what one shape is, I'm going to tell you what I didn't like. I'm going to tell you what I did like. I'm going to tell you what God taught me, as well as what God gave me, and, and how um, He He helped me, and how He has grown me in this season of my life. Now, first of all, what is one shape camps? So, one shape camps was actually founded by Truett Cathy. He is the founder. Um, he has passed away, but he is the founder of Chick Fil A. Chick Fil A, as you know, is a Christian company. Um, they have been a little bit woke, to my knowledge, recently. But um, when it was originally rooted on good findings, on good morals, on good foundations, um, it was founded by Truett Cathy. Truett Cathy is a Christian entrepreneur, and he always put God before everything else. Um, and he and he put an emphasis on that. He didn't force his beliefs upon anyone, but he did put an emphasis on um, a Christian-based business, right? So Windshape Camps was founded by him. And so what he would do is he would use that as a form of ministry um, to start what is now Windshape Camps. Now Windshape, or the Windshape Foundation, I, sh I should say, the Windshape Foundation has multiple different forms of ministry in and of itself. And I'm going to read them to you. It's, so some of the ministry programs that they have include summer camp activities, team and leader development, f uh, foster care, college leadership programs, and marriage enrichment. And so they have different types of campus or ministries, different types of things. I was specifically in the camp world um, in regards to that. And so just the camp world has so many different camps across the country. Um, they have some in, I think, Alabama, Florida, Georgia, um, and so I, and there's like two different areas that, that some friends and I decided to do. It was either Cleveland, Georgia, or uh, Mount Berry, Georgia. So I was in Mount Berry, Georgia specifically, um, and so it's the boys camp, it's a boys only camp. And so, um, you know, that's where I, I saw myself to be. That's where the Lord at least told me to be. So a little bit about the camp. So um, they have different types of camps. There's wind-shaped boys, there's wind-shaped girls. Uh, there's Windshape Communities, and then there's Windshape, Windshape International. Windshape Boys Camp is basically, they have a couple areas um, within the country, I believe. Windshape Girls as well is, is a couple different areas in Georgia as well, specifically. And, you know, Windshape Communities was where basically you get to travel across um, the country, in the states specifically Florida, Georgia, and Alabama. And Windshape Communities is actually where you get to um, travel um, to either, I think it's Costa Rica or Brazil, where they have international camps as well. So it's really cool, um, just the different types of locations and the different forms of ministry that they have in regards to this. A couple things about Windship as well that are pretty cool. One is that they book and they, they take care of your flights, uh, the mileage for your driving if you choose to drive. They take care of literally everything, your food, your shelter, all the basic needs, they have it covered. It's on them. Another thing too is that it is the number one highest paying job in or not job it's the highest paying camp in the states you won't find a camp that'll pay more that'll pay better um than what they do here i i do love how they they you know take care of your basic needs um and on top of that they they compensate you for your time and and i think it's pretty cool how there's opportunity here you know you can do there's literally all types of positions during the summer there's you know videographer photographer you can be a speaker you can be a counselor. You can be so many things that they have. The, the list literally goes on and on in regards to the positions that they have here specifically, whether it's a leadership position or it's just to be a counselor. In regards to how I got involved, so one of my best friends, his, his name's Knox. We've had him on the podcast like three different times. He, um, you know, was just plugging it and out there and he was sharing it. And he had done windshift for like, I think, three years or something um, or three summers prior. And so he told a bunch of our friends from our friend group. And so most of them decided to go. And so they did. And, and so I was on the fence of it. At first, I was like, ah, I didn't know much on it. I didn't know how I felt about it. But then I prayed towards the Lord. And one thing I want to share with you guys, as I'm sure some of you know, is my heart. Um, I have a heart for younger uh, men specifically to, to impact the generations, to speak to them, to mentor, to teach 
um, just in general, especially with the decline in manhood, especially in biblical manhood here in the U.S. And so, you know, I wanted to speak and I've always wanted to speak just in general and to get more into that area. And so I, it got me thinking, like, do I want to do it? Is this something I'm meant to do? So I prayed about it. I applied. I got the job. I got the offer and everything. And so um, it's been a huge blessing. Um, and that's a little bit on how I got involved. And I knew it was a two month, a two and a half month commitment, um, you know, closer to three. But I knew that it was well worth it. And this is something that I wanted to fully be obedient towards the Lord and trust him and let him know and, and to run towards him specifically. And so in regards to that, I was like, hey, like I, I trust God and I'm going to run towards God. And don't get me wrong. There have been temptations on me just wanting to quit or, or you know, listen to the lies of the enemy, believe the lies of the enemy and be like, oh, no, it's not meant for you. Oh, no, don't do it. Oh, no, it's too much. And it was a little bit overwhelming. But by God's grace, I've learned a lot. I've grown a lot. And so I can't, I want to share with you guys some of that stuff that I've learned. So I will say, though, there were certain things that I did not like. There are certain things that I liked. And there were things that also that the Lord had taught me, um, as well as, you know, just taught me and what he had done for me as well, how he had grown me. Okay, so I'm going to go into the what I did not like first. There was minor stuff about the camp that I'm not, I wasn't a big fan of, but it was more so, I guess... Um, I don't know how to say this or I don't know how to how to communicate this, but, you know, I'm in leadership here. So I'm a communicator. Um, and, and part of that is obviously me speaking on stage like literally every day for the most part. And so, you know, there were other people on leadership as well. Right. Other people in the similar level, similar areas, whatever. Right. And so what I didn't like was um, I wasn't really a big fan of the leadership. I wasn't a fan of, of some people who were, you know, in my level who were were just, you know, kind of taking advantage of their power or they thought they were so special and great and majestic and all this crap. I was not a fan. And so you guys know me. I'm very uh, confrontational. Um, and sometimes I, I can be a bit harsh, but that's just how I am. And so now it doesn't justify, of course, if I do it in an unjust way or in a way that is not glorifying towards the Lord. So I did have some conversations with people. Um, so it was pretty cool to I, at least, you know, have those much needed uh, conversations um, but I still wasn't a fan of some of the other leadership as well because I, I was I one thing I picked up on was the fact that like there seems to be this like um, control or dominance for power you know who gets to point out and tell people what to do who gets to say what and who gets to do all these things and also the way sometimes people would treat people who weren't in a leadership uh, position I thought was kind of disgusting and it really wasn't cool and and I've observed that and and you know. I was placed in a position where by God's grace, you know, some people would come to me, some people would talk to me about certain situations, about certain circumstances and stuff, because I put, like, I'm not trying to sound, you know, all oh so righteous or anything, but because I knew where I was at, right? So yes, I'm a leader, but I'm also, you know, I'm not a boss, I'm a leader. I'm supposed to be leading people towards a vision, towards a direction and towards something um, that is more than just myself, right? So I think when you get the concept of leadership and, and you know that there's a difference between being a boss and being a leader, that comes a long way. And so I placed myself in a position where I would try to be approachable. Um, doesn't mean I was perfect at all by any means, but you know, I, I would pick up on that. And so, you know, I noticed that there was a little bit of tension between those who were uh, below us and then as well as those who were on the same level because those who were in my level of leadership or whatever, you know, there was either abuse of power or just like this overall control for dominance. And the sad thing is, I guess, like maybe it's, this is just the highlight for some people in their lives or something. So they try to think they're cool and all this stuff and, oh, do this, do that. Why are you doing this? You know, and, they, and that's another thing too I wasn't a big fan of is how serious they took their jobs. Like some of these guys, um, they don't work full time here. They don't. They're only here for the summer and they thought they were so funny or so cool or, or oh, I'm a man and all this crap. And it was just disgusting. Like I said, I, I, I did not like that at all. I thought it was uncool. And, and some of these guys, you know, they just take their job way too serious and, and they think they're all that, but they're really not. So that was one thing I wasn't too uh, fond of, I guess. I will say, though, you know, Windship Camps also has a full time staff. And one thing I also did not like was that I did notice a little bit of favoritism with those in the same level as me of leadership. So there, you know, I'm I'm what's considered program staff for people, you know, in some form of leadership. And then there are people who are full time. Like this is their career. This is what they do for a living, where they work throughout the year. And I did notice a little bit of favoritism. So that wasn't, you know, too much that I was a big fan of. I, I didn't think that was cool either. The communication wasn't the best in regards to the higher ups. I think sometimes they would expect things from you that they just automatically assumed you would know right there and then, especially if this was your first time. 
Um, I did not like that. I thought the communication was a little off. I think they could have done a little better on thoroughly communicating things um, better just in general. Um, but, you know, no ministry, no program, nothing is, is perfect as it is. But I think that's another thing that I wasn't too fond of. So another thing too is that I, I picked up on was that there was a little bit of toxicity, not amongst the full-time staff or just the ministry, but I guess some of the people who were here for the summer, this was their first time. I, I did pick up on that because I would notice and I would I would see that there's a lot of like talking behind people's backs or, you know, like if there was a situation that arose, instead of talking to the, to the person directly, it was just a bunch of complaining or, you know, bitching about the person or, 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 you know, pointing out their wrongdoings instead of having these necessary and private conversations um, in a way that can be glorifying, honoring towards the Lord, and in a way that can also be loving towards it. So uh, I just didn't like that because there was a little bit of toxicity. And, I, you know, I'm, I'm always the guy. Like, I'm, I'm always the guy to just point it out as well as, like, you know, be like, you know, hey, say it to their face or, or stop saying stuff in general. Um, so I didn't like that because it wasn't just the fact that there was complaining behind other people's backs. It was also the fact that, you know, I noticed that when there was a wrong or there was a situation that arose or whatever, um, and, but then they saw him in person. It's like a smiley face and acting all cool and stuff. And I'm like, what's up with that? Like, I, I didn't like that. So that was that was kind of gross, too. Now, the last thing here was I kind of felt more of a performance than a, a form of glorification or honor towards God, if that makes sense. I feel like, you know, some people were more focused on the details um, of how things were to be run or th how things were to look just for the appearance and not for, hey, let's do this for God kind of thing. Um, sometimes we wouldn't really start off with prayer. Sometimes we wouldn't really do things according, at least that's the vibe I picked up off. Like we wouldn't really do things according to the thing for the Lord. It was just more so like, hey, let's do this. You know, let's look great. Let's do good and, and kill it. Whether it was speaking, whether it was, you know, music, whether it was some of the events or the games that went on, um, stuff like that. I was not too fond of that. Um, just because like, you know, first Corinthians, it's literally like one of the things we, we talk about all the time. First Corinthians 10 31, uh, whether you eat or drink, whatever you do, do it all to the glory of God. Right. So we're to do it to the glory of God, not of man, not of people, but of God. And I felt like sometimes there wasn't always an overall focus of things for the Lord, if that makes sense. Now that those are just some of the things I didn't like, but here's the thing, some of the things that I did like that I just loved about the camp. First of all, it's a really fun environment. It's a really great environment while also revealing and talking about the importance of having Christ at the center of everything. Um, I love the emphasis that the Windshape Camps, the actual organization does on having Christ being the center of everything that they do. You guys know I'm not a fan of culture Christianity and these guys really did not reflect that or represent that or show that at all. So I did love that. I loved what Windshape Camp stands for. I love what Windshape Camp stands for and that is to prioritize the gospel above everything else, above all else. I don't think people realize how important the gospel is and sometimes how we can get sidetracked or moved on to the side for certain stuff. But Windshape Camps puts an emphasis on prioritizing the gospel above all else. And that was super important. I love how, how the focus was there about the gospel because I think it is super important to know that the gospel comes first before anything else. And so I love how they prioritize the gospel as well as sharing it with the kids, sharing it with the campers specifically. I thought it was a huge blessing to be a part of and to acknowledge. Another thing too is everything that they do is for the mission of Christ, absolutely everything they do. I think it's super important because um, it's more than just a summer camp for fun. It's more than just hanging out or, or social gathering or meeting new people. It's like, it, no, it literally is the mission for Christ. And I think Windshape Camps does a great job on making sure it's important to know that Christ comes before everything and as well to share that with non-believers as well. And how important it is to have a spiritual impact on these campers as well because they, we could possibly be their only source of actually ever, ever getting to know who God is or anything. And I love how Windshape Camps, you know, puts that out on top and they put that at, at first. Another thing too that I loved about the camp specifically, I guess under that because the camp didn't really do much on this, was I met a lot of amazing people. You know, I told you that there were some douchebags um, you know, in the, in the, in the other leadership part, but you know, while that sucked, I met some amazing people. I met some awesome people who truly have a heart for Jesus and who truly are biblically founded men. Um, and I, I loved how there was times of joking, there was times of working all this stuff, but there was also times of serious conversation, getting to know people better, their stories, their background, their testimonies and stuff. And I think it's super awesome seeing different walks of faith, but also still walking towards the Lord, if that makes any sense. And so I met a lot of amazing people, a lot of biblically founded people, a lot of people that I can truthfully say, you know, through the discernment and the way they act, 
that these are men of God. Like these are men who truly, who truly seek out God, his kingdom and his righteousness first. And I've met a lot of those biblically founded men. So that was a huge blessing as well. Another thing too that I really loved is the standards and the protocols that windshake camps would do to protect children specifically. Um, a lot of us don't know about just the, the, the severity, I guess, of how easy a child can be trafficked or how easy a child could be endangered um, with so many different things and so many circumstances. And so I loved here how Windshape, they prioritize that child like crazy, like it's one of their own, literally. And so what I love about that is just how they, they take these standards and they, they, they really prioritize the safety and all the protocols they do to take. Um, in regards to uh, just make sure that the child is safe, saved, saved. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry. Is safe, and so I think it's super awesome how how they take that into consideration. Because I will say, like camp camps, kids camps, boys camps especially, can be like an easy place, easily for some for a kid to you know um, for there to for them to get taken advantage of you know. And um, there have been stories and cases in regards to that, but. The cool thing of that is that here they don't play games, they don't they don't mess around. They take the child's life um, very serious. They take it very, 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 very serious, and they, they prioritize the safetyness of the child. So that's one thing I like too is how Windshape Camps was very big on you know really just um, prioritizing the safetyness of the child. So here is what the Lord has either taught me or done for me in the the past two and a half months, the past three months here at Windshape Camps. One thing he has taught me slash put an emphasis on is patience with people. So patience with people, meaning, you know, learning that not everyone thinks like me, not everyone works like me, not everyone has the same mindset or the same, I don't want to say heart, but the same view as me. And that's okay. That's okay because, you know, ultimately when, when we're just, you know, if we think, right, that we should always work with those or do stuff with those who think just like us, sometimes that can be dangerous because then you only know what you know, right? You don't know what other people may know. And sometimes it's good to be different. Sometimes it's good to be the dumbest person in the room because of the fact that, you know, not everyone thinks like you. And sometimes there are different ways of doing things. It doesn't always have to be your own way. So the Lord has taught me, you know, through other people, um, really that not everyone thinks like me. Not everyone does things the same way I do. But it's okay because at the end of the day, like there's different forms of ministry. There's different forms of, of, you know, running towards God. But the important thing is to run towards God, to have value in knowing that it is all for the Lord and towards the Lord. So no matter how, what way is done or how it's done, it's okay because God is what comes out first. God is number one, or at least he should be. Another moral thing or character flaw or whatever you want to call it that God has taught me was to not be so quick to judge. So, you know, I have a bad habit sometimes, and I'm, I'm being real with you guys. Like, I have a really bad habit, habit of, like, internally judging someone. So if someone looks a certain way or someone talks a certain way or someone does something off, that, that to me may seem off, I'm very quick to judge or make assumptions on that person's character and who that person is. And so I did a couple of judgment calls on some people from the very beginning, and they weren't what I thought they were. And some of them are good friends and some of them I got to know their story and get to know them better and stuff. And I repented from that. I genuinely felt bad because it got me thinking like, man, I really shouldn't be judging people or, or making quick assumptions just because of how they look or, or how they speak or who they are or who they reflect or at least who they who they presume themselves to be. So that was a big one that, that really convicted me, that really hit me was to not be quick to judge um, because... I ultimately, like, that's not a cool thing. That's really not cool to make assumptions about someone, specifically negative assumptions. And so that was another thing, too, that the Lord had taught me in regards to that. Something, too, that the Lord had taught me was how to be an intentional leader. So I've always been drawn towards leadership in general, but to be intentional. And what that looked like for me was to, like, talk to people specifically, get to know them better, know their stories, and also listen to them. Really just not say anything, but just listen to them, hear them out and hear where they're coming from. So he taught me very well um, to be an intentional leader, right? And to be good, yes, but to always have an, a listening ear and sometimes not always speak or sometimes not always responsive, but really to just be intentional. And I think a lot of times people think leadership means to have the right answer or to do the right thing or to point people on where to go. But sometimes leadership starts with just listening to someone and, and responding in kindness by just listening, not saying anything. This is a big one right here. Um, the Lord has taught me 
how to be a better speaker and how to speak to children specifically. So what I mean by that is like, you know, kids are great. Um, you know, the Bible talks about how uh, children are inheritance or a gift from the Lord. And so I, there's just something about certain kids that I'm just like, man, that's an awesome kid and stuff. And then sometimes there are kids who are just like, they make you want to pull your hair and, and give you gray hair. But it, he really did teach me how to like be more patient, how to listen, how to observe, how to um, really just be better with kids in general. Because I've never had problems with kids. It's just more so like, I guess um, sometimes I'd be quick to lose my temper or lose patience or whatever but to respond in love and to actually act out in love as well. So he did teach me how to speak towards kids specifically, um, you know, how to be more patient with them. And speaking of speaking, he also taught me how to be a better speaker. I've taken notes. Um, I'm so excited because I did uh, record my messages and stuff. So I'm excited for you guys to see and to listen to them. But he also taught me very much how to, how to, um, always like be a better speaker as well as like always prioritizing the word of God first and not just having a motivational speech. So that was a big thing too. That was a huge lesson because that was my, pro that's literally what I signed up for is to be a speaker, um, you know, for the sessions and stuff. And I'm, like I said, I'm super excited for you guys to listen to it. So here are the, some, some of the things that the Lord had done for me specifically. Okay. First and foremost is to have a thirst and a desire to read his word again. So what I mean by that is, you know, by God's grace, I have this desire of memorizing scripture. And I've been able to memorize a few verses throughout the summer and stuff. But I love how I was able to, you know, have that desire again because of God and God alone. You see, the few months leading up to Windshape, I was anxious. I was a bit overwhelmed because I had a lot of stuff going on. And, you know, because of that, I kind of like pushed out or pushed aside the word of God, right? Um, not that I wanted to, because I wanted to read God's word, but I just didn't intentionally do it. And I would pray, and I would pray, and I would pray, and I would ask God, God, please give me the desire to read your word. Please give me the desire for scripture. Please help me, God. And I would sometimes under, not understand why God wouldn't do it. But for some reason, I don't know how to explain it, but something hit me this summer of like, you know, reading his word, reading his word and being intentional and like really having the right heart posture and the right um, interest at heart to read God's word. And so by God's grace, like I have that desire and I have that thirst. And I'm sure there's going to be times and seasons again where I'm just not going to want to do it. But, you know, by God's grace, like I'm able to have that uh, thirst because of him, because I've been praying and, and, and I have it. And I, you know, right now I'm in Isaiah and I'm in a couple of stuff in the New Testament. But like I have this thirst and I have this desire to read the word of the Lord. So that's been a huge privilege and a huge blessing. Another thing too, being here that God, God has done for me in a way is really to slow down, to take a breath and to focus and to enjoy each and every minute and second of every day. Um, I don't know how to explain it, but like I've like this summer has been slow, but in a good way. And so I've been more focused on the present, more focused on my day to day and, uh, you know, endeavors, more focused on what the tasks are before me and to focus on them and to endure them and to, you know, finish strong and to focus truly on what, you know, there is what what is going on sort of thing. Like, what do I have to do? Right. But to focus and to slow down, to relax and to not be next thing, next thing, next thing, but no relax, right? To live day by day. So that's been a huge blessing. Another thing too that God has done for me was really to remind me to be faithful towards him and to run towards him first. So I'll give you an example. There was one day where we have, we have this thing called rest time here and it's in the name you rest during that time. And so I had rest time and I, I woke up, but I was so tired and I was so drained. I was like, man, I don't want to talk to anyone. I don't want to do anything right now. Like I just want to mind my own business and do my own thing. So I had to get plugged in though with one of the, with one of the campers, groups and so you know what stemmed from that was I was there and I was just like not having it I was so tired I didn't want to do anything I don't want to talk to anyone but I just remember running God reminded me of this I ran to him first and I was like Lord I'm so tired right now Lord I need you God please give me strength please give me endurance please help me Lord because I can't do it on my own and I need you God I need you right here right now especially in this very moment and I kid you not the Holy Spirit like slapped me in the face and gave me this energy that I don't know how to explain that just burst out of nowhere. And I was talking to the campers. I was getting plugged into the activities. I was running around doing like, you know, these extra, not exercise, these like the sports games and stuff. And it was only by God's grace. And so he taught me, hey, my child, my son, run to me first, run to me first. 
ask me first, go to me first. And so in that very moment, the Lord was faithful to do that. He was faithful and he reminded me to run to him first. And so that was one thing too that God had done for me to remind me to run towards him first. Now, I had to sacrifice a lot to be here because this was two and a half months of commitment, of time, of a lot of things. But here's a couple of things. One, I do not regret it at all. I do not regret it at all because this is something that I needed. This is something that the Lord allowed. This is something that the Lord planted clearly from the beginning. And so I do not regret the time that I've spent here. I do not regret at all making the choice to be here. It has been nothing but a huge blessing, a huge learning stone for me, and as well as a huge moment of revelation of how I can improve as a person, how I can improve I, how I can improve as a leader and how I can improve, most importantly, as a follower of Christ, right? So that's been a huge blessing because I've learned a lot being here. I've met amazing people. I've met great people. And I love, like I said, what Winship Camps stands for. I love what they represent. I love the importance and the emphasis they put on Christ. Now, will I be here next year? I don't know. I don't think so, um, unless if God says otherwise. But it's still been a huge blessing because I just remember, you know, when I graduated high school, like I've always wanted to be at a sleepaway camp to work at one specifically um, and to be a part of it. And so I'm at an age right now where I'm 22. So it's like I'm at I'm at the cutoff point. Um, so I, I, I made it, but I'm, I'm just, you know, so thankful for the opportunity that I've been uh, that I've been at to be able to be here, to be able to do this and to partake in this. So huge blessing um, in regards to that. Um, I will cherish these moments forever. I will enjoy it and I will, you know, cherish the friendships that I've made here. And it's been a huge blessing. And, and I'm just excited to go back home, though, to get back home, to, to go back to work and to, to, you know, continue life and to continue moving um, where the Lord wants me to be, where he has me at specifically. Thank you guys so much for listening to this podcast. Um, I would recommend and I would encourage you guys too. Honestly, if you're if you've just graduated high school or you're 18, like I would encourage you guys to look into uh, working at Winship Camps. I think it's a phenomenal place, um, especially if you just graduated high school. So definitely look into that. But with that said, you know, guys, if you could subscribe, if you're on YouTube, follow us on Spotify, follow us on Instagram, follow us on Apple Podcasts as well. Thank you for listening. Thank you for taking the time to do this. Uh, I heavily appreciate each and every one of you. And, you know, within the next few episodes, I, w- I want to say the next, like, s- anywhere from 8 to 10 or something, I, I got to check back. Um, you guys are going to get the recordings of my messages. That's what's going to ha- happen for the next few. And then from there, we'll we'll get back onto the grind. We'll get back onto, you know, traditional interviews and, and podcasts with other people as well. Thank you guys so much, though, once again for listening. I love each and every one of you who are taking the time to listen and to watch this. And I'll catch you guys on to the next episode. All right. Take care.